This tutorial is about design schemes and the variation actor. First we will add some furniture meshes and then use the variation actor to make them change in the scene. Create a level in the level browser. Choose empty level. Browse to the project folder Arch Viz PRJ01 and save it with the name AVP01 Furniture. Our new furniture will go in here to keep it separated and leave the UI3 demo project unchanged. The level is a streaming level. Move it into the streaming folder. Then select the info map, browse to the streaming level array and add the level to the list. At the bottom right corner of the viewport is a transparent window which shows you the name of the current level. The level is also formatted bold in the level browser. All newly placed assets will go into the current level. The UI already contains a design scheme feature in the variations menu that we added in the previous tutorial. It changes the materials of most furniture meshes in the scene. Select the info map. Browse to the main menu layout array. It is the features with preview with the ID number 1. Check the settings in the feature with preview array. There are two options. The first has the option 0 and the other the option 1. The design scheme will send the option to all variation actors in the scene. When you click the first image it will send 0 and when you click the second image it will send 1. Browse to the furniture folder in the UI3 project and enable the static mesh filter. This will display all static meshes in all subfolders. I'm adding 3 of the couch meshes. These are modular meshes and form a larger seating element. Then I add a rug on the floor. The variation actor is the connecting element between the UI and the actors in the scene. You can find it in the UI3 blueprint folder. Drag the bps.ui3 variations blueprint into the scene and move it next to the couch. First, we need to connect the three couch meshes with the variation actor. Browse to the Actors Array in the Details panel. Add three array elements by clicking on the plus icon three times. Now click on the eyedropper icon of the first array element and select one of the couch meshes. Do this for the other two couch meshes. You can see the scene component names of the three couch meshes in the three array elements now. The variation actor needs to be in the same level as the couch or the couch won't be selectable. Select the Variation Blueprint and give it a list name in the Details Panel's Variation Settings. Then browse to the Variation Material section. Click the plus icon to add an array element to the Materials Array. The couches have only one material and we can leave the material ID at zero. Click the plus icon next to the Material Variations Array five times to add five material slots. The couches are old-school modular assets with a single baked material. They are still good to use, although Nanite made this type of material optimization obsolete. Use the little folder icon next to the material slot to navigate to the location where the couch's material is. There are a few variations in the material folder for the couches. I'll add some of them to the material variations array. The materials and material ID need to be exactly the same for all meshes added to the actor's array. 
Otherwise, another variation actor is required for each unique material and material ID combination. The six little dots in front of the material slot can be used to rearrange the array elements. Use the default variation ID to cycle through the material variations. Use for design schemes needs to remain ticked unless you want to exclude this blueprint actor from the design scheme. I added this craft mesh package available on the marketplace to the scene. I'll add a chair and foot rest from the package to the scene. The material section shows that the meshes have multiple material IDs. And the materials are not the same. The first slot reads, display two materials. Chair and foot rest will need to have separate variation blueprints. I'll add them from the UI3 blueprints folder. Actors can be copied by moving them, while holding down the Alt key on the keyboard. I quickly name the two actors. The chair's main fabric materials seem to be in the first two slots. Clicking on the little folder icon will navigate to the materials. Back in the variation blueprint I connect the mesh and the actors array first. Add an array element to the materials array and a slot to the variation materials. I use the selected material from the content browser as the first choice. I'll try some of the materials to find out which of them are meant as variations for the chair. The name of the materials should give a clue as well. There are five material variations that could be used. I arrange them to match the color variations of the large couch. The second material slot of the chair is for the fabric seams and has the same material as the first slot. I add another materials array element and copy the variation materials array from ID 0 to ID 1. Then I change the material ID of the new materials array to ID 1. The seams are now yellow as well. I do the same thing for the foot rest. I speed this up a bit. I'll add a table from the same package. I add a variation blueprint for it and another one for the rug. I name them both and connect the meshes in the actors array. The table top has material ID number 0. I add three variation materials for it. The rug is from the UI3 demo project. There are two variation materials available for the rug. You can add them to the variation actor. Time to test again.
The new assets change their materials. But the couch material is a bit bland. The other red material seems to be nicer. I'll swap their position. This tutorial is not about creating the best looking scene. Nothing has changed. I didn't save the furniture level. Now it works. The other red looks a bit better with the chair's material. This is the end of this tutorial. The next tutorials will be about variation groups, editing individual assets and what else can be done with the variation blueprint.